I made a complete review video and then realized I made a big mistake. Let's take a look at the Rock Brothers bar tape. Hi, I'm John and welcome to Cycling on a Shoestring and today we're going to talk about Rock Brothers or Rock Bros Bar Tape. I'm never quite sure what it is, but it's B-R-O-S, we'll call it Rock Brothers for the remainder of this video. And here it is on my bars on my bike down here in my basement. Now, generally I wouldn't show you the tape on my bike until the end of the video, but the other day I did a complete video watched it and then realized I might have made a big mistake. So I'm going to explain that to you in just a moment, but first let's take a look at what's in the box and then I'll come back and we'll talk about a problem I had with my video and I'll give you my suggestions regarding this tape and whether I recommend it. Here's what you get in the box. Obviously you get some tape for your left side, your right side, and you get a couple of plugs for the end of your bars with the Rock Brothers logo on there. Now what doesn't come in the package are these. Now I've had these for a long time. I always save these from a bar tape I've had in the past. Uh, these you put on your bars. They're for going over the clamps in the back of your bars behind your brake shift levers so that you don't have a gap when you're putting your tape on and it covers that spot. Now if you don't get this like you do with this Rock Brothers, Others, you can always cut you know a piece about that long off the end and use that now as far as the tape goes I mean it looks really nice this comes in uh, three different colors as you can see this one is black with red accents it also comes straight up black with blue accents and with white accents and it's not much different than the tape I already had on my bike that's the stuff that's on my bike right now and as you can see this has the adhesive strip down the middle I would suggest if you're buying bar tape get it with the adhesive strip that way it's just easy easier to put on it stays in place while you're doing it now as far as looking at the tape it looks very similar to the tape I've got on there but it's got this textured um, part on the outside we'll have to see how that feels when I've got it on the bike I don't want to slide around on my bars I don't think it's going to be slippery and it does have enough cushion to absorb some of the road chatter you're gonna get out when you're riding your bike so let's put okay I also want to point out that once I unrolled the tape there was some of this in there and this is basically the finishing tape for the top of your bar when you're done I use electrical tape I think it works better but this does come in the package as well so what did I do wrong what was the mistake I made in my video the other day uh, I did not want to do an injustice to Rock Brothers and their bar tape so here's what I noticed about the tape when I did it so I'm going to show you that video right now and I'll come back and give you my thoughts on what I did wrong when I put it on my bike We've run into a bit of a problem while I'm putting this on the bike. Now check this out. Of course, that white strip down the middle is adhesive. And if you look what I've done here, I have been pulling the adhesive off. But as the adhesive has been coming off, so has the tape underneath. Can you see that? All that red is part of the bar tape. Now, So as you can see, as I was pulling off that white paper, all of the adhesive was coming off the tape as well. I don't think that's quite true. I think I made a mistake. Now, when I have removed that paper off of other types of bar tape, like you're seeing right here, it usually comes off really easy. But when I pulled it off of the Rock Brothers tape, I think I grabbed a hold of the adhesive as well, and I pulled it all the way off the tape before I put it on my bars. If I had been more careful, I'm sure, I am sure about this, I could have peeled that paper off and got it off with the adhesive still on the tape. So that's the mistake I made and that's why I didn't post that original video. I think the bar tape looks really good. I think it looks nice. Now I did find another issue with this tape and let's take a look at that right now. And let's start wrapping the tape. And I'm giving it a good pull here. And we'll go one more turn, get up closer to the turn and now as you get up to here can you see the red down in here let me put my knife in there you can see this gap reforming right in here see that right in there so there's a gap in there now I'm pulling as tight as I can but I got a gap there so I'm gonna have to cover over that gap and squeeze that tape underneath and as I come up to the next turn let's come up here a little bit farther you can see another gap forming right there 
And All right, so as you can see, it doesn't lay down as nicely on your bars as what you might call cork tape. Because cork tape, as you're seeing right here, is a lot stretchier and it goes on a lot easier. Now this is the actual tape I took off my bike and I was doing this for demonstration purposes in my previous video, which I didn't release. So it doesn't lay down as nicely, but if you really pull it, and you can pull this tape because of the coating on it, you're not going to tear it or rip it. If you really pull it, you can get it to lay down on your bars. Now, one of the problems with this tape is I don't think it's quite long enough. When you have a cork-like tape, you are stretching a little bit, and I think it gets longer the more you put on your bars. This doesn't because it doesn't stretch. And if you look at the way it is right now, I wish the tape was a little bit farther towards my stem, maybe an inch, maybe a little bit more, maybe a couple of more twists. So I think Rock Brothers should actually extend the length of their tape just a little bit. Now you might say, well, John, you could have wrapped it less tightly or not overlapped it as much. But I was concerned because of the way it laid down originally with those little gaps in there that it might stretch out and I might end up with gaps in it when it's on my bike. So that's why I wrapped it a little more tightly. The other thing about this tape is they should have included those little pieces that go in behind your brake levers and cover up that clamp. You might be inclined to cut it off the length of tape that you're going to put on your bars and then it's going to be even shorter and you might have more of an issue with getting it close to your stem. So those are a couple of things they might include in the box. That would be really a good idea. They also might want to include a little thing saying, John, make sure you're careful tearing the paper off the adhesive. Okay, something like that might come in handy. Now, what do I like about it? I think it looks great. I think it looks really nice. I also think that if I have to maybe repair a chain at the side of the road and I get greasy fingers, if I do get grease on this because of the coating on it, it'll be easier to clean off. So that's really a benefit about this. But another thing you might want to consider is because it doesn't, because I stretched it a little bit, it's not quite as cushy as regular cork tape. So if you're concerned about your bar tape taking away some of that road chatter, I don't think this is the stuff that's gonna do it for you because you've stretched it so much. It has got thinner, but you can always put on, I guess, thicker gloves, right? Overall, pretty nice looking tape. Now. How do I rate it? Now, I normally don't do a numbered rating. I'd probably give this a seven out of 10, uh, but I would have given my cork stuff probably a 10 out of 10 because I put it on, didn't think about it much until I took it off later. So it's pretty good, but there are ways they can improve this tape. So I hope that explains everything to you. Oh, I hope I didn't get too talkative on this one, but I wanted to be clear about what I did with this tape when I put it on the bars on my bike. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope it was helpful. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel as well. We're over 1,600 now, working our way towards 1,700 and then on to 2,000 subscribers. We'll see you next time on Cycling on a Shoestring.